Hello, welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. I'm your host, Dr. James J.C. Cooley. Wow. We got an absolutely fantastic show coming your way. We got my good friend and you know colleague on the uh, E360. I'm going to tell you a little bit about him uh, uh, in a few minutes, but uh, we, we got a show that's going to uplift you, going to give you confidence, courage, hope, belief, most importantly, faith that you can do anything that you set your mind to. You know, so uh, we're going to talk about some of the things that many of us have doubts about, and we don't have the courage to reach out to others or to reach out to ourselves to find out what are some of the things that we have to have courage in in order to move forward in life and to live the best life that we can. I got this young man today. I can call him young, a young man that's going to uh, enlighten us on a lot of different things and also tell you a lot of things that he's doing. He's world-renowned. Uh, his show is in 181 countries. He's, he's a talk show host as well. And uh, just like I say, he's doing some great, great things. So i tell you what, first of all, let me tell you what the title of the show is. Michelle, she's going to join us later, later down the line. But the title of the show is Find Your Courage, Change Your Life. Let me say that one more time. Find your courage. Change your life. Be the person that you want to be. You know, so what you have to have, you have to believe in yourself. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the, what we're going to talk about, some of the show highlights. We're going to have a sit-down discussion with my main man, Ken D. Foster. He's a keynote speaker, uh, best-selling author, business strategist, uh, news personnel, like I told you business owner, all of those type of things. We're going to discover how does skin define courage? The role self-awareness plays in having the courage to change your life. And we're also going to discuss his new book, a new book out there, The Courage to Change Everything. And most important, we're going to talk about the core values used to be successful. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about this young man, but then we're going to bring him on. He, he's going to share uh, with you or uh, who he is. Just like I mentioned to you, Candy Foster is a keynote speaker, best selling author, business strategist, news personality who owns a broadcast and media pro production company. He is executive producer and host of The Voices of Courage, a syndicated uh, show on television and podcast, radio. And just like I mentioned, he is featured in 181 countries. I tell you what, without any further ado, this brain gone, Candy Foster. How are you doing, sir? Dr. James, it is so good to see you and be here with you. I'm doing absolutely fantastic. And most days of my life are that way. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, man? I, I, I'm i just uh, encouraged uh, with the title of this. Uh, can you tell our viewers and our listeners a little bit more about you that I did not go over? Um, where you were born and raised? Uh, what makes you click? Why you do the things that that you were doing? <laughs> well, I was born in Whittier, California, and I was raised by two amazing parents. Uh, they both work for the state, and they I have uh, three uh, 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 three siblings. And you know, today, uh, well, a lot, you know, when I back then, when I was a young boy. Uh, I, you know, I had, I had a lot of courage. I did a lot of things and, uh, got me in a lot of trouble and, uh, but it was unfettered courage. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, uh there wasn't any real wisdom involved with that. So I would just go off on my own and do, do fun things. And, uh, like I said, sometimes get me in trouble, but you know, it was a good childhood. I, uh, I enjoyed my upbringing. Um, and, you know, I went on to go to college down here in San Diego, San Diego State. And then while I was in school, I decided that I wanted to start a waterbed store. I was working for a company. I thought I could do this. So I did. And uh, I actually dropped out of school and opened a, a, a waterbed store that opened, it became a chain. And that's where I really got my entrepreneurial uh, spirit kicked in. And um you know, uh, that's where I started. And then I, you know, went on to create a lot more businesses over the years. And, um, you know, that's kind of where I am now. But you don't have to say this, but 
I would say I started down a road when I was young of I didn't really know most of the success principles that I do today. And I think a lot of us, unless you're taking, uh, uh, even, even if you're taking business uh, uh, admin or business operations or business uh, economics in college, um, you're still not getting everything you need because there's certain principles that I've learned after being a coach now for 28 years and working with the top of the top, the industry best of the best. Uh, I've learned that there are certain principles that when we apply, they impact all areas of our life, not just our business life. They impact our career, they impact our spiritual life, our home life, our uh, life with our relationships, all areas. Those are the principles that I'd like to talk today, James, as we move into this a little bit. Wow, you know, so, hey Ken, so, uh, yeah. Let's let's go back a little bit uh, because uh, uh, influences as we grow up and as we uh, uh, develop our character, our personality, and the person that we do. Where how did your family and and community help shape your thought process? That you <laughs> <probably did? laughs> well, I'm laughing because uh, I'm thinking of my dad right now, and uh, my dad was uh, uh, was a cop. He was with the Los Angeles Police Department for 48 years, and he had a huge heart. That's probably what uh, he was able to uh, be on that force for 48 years. Uh, but he also uh, he knew how to ask questions. You know, sometimes he's interrogating me, especially in, in, in high school, right? Where you been? What you been up to? Who are you hanging with? <laughs> but those questions uh, really sunk in with me. He really asked a lot of questions of myself, my friends. And as a result of that, um, over the you know, years later, I wrote this book. It's called Ask and You Will Succeed. A thousand and one ordinary questions to, to create extraordinary success. 35 different areas of life. So from that basis of him, you know, asking, asking, and I realized, you know, at a young age, you know, if you ask lousy questions, you get lousy answers, right? I mean, if you ask what's wrong with me, I guarantee your mind will answer that. But if you ask a, a question that might give you a, a quantum breakthrough um, and you ask just like, well, what is the quantum breakthrough I need to take my business to the next level? or take my show to the next level. You ask and you keep asking. Eventually we get the answer to those. My good friend, Mark Victor Hansen and Jack Canfield who wrote uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul, they've sold a billion books. Mark one time told me, he says, Ken, we asked, uh, we asked the universe, uh, oh God, 300 times, what is a mega best-selling book title? And that's where they got Chicken Soup for the Soul, right? So there's, there's principles involved here. And if we're willing to take a deep dive within ourselves and start to live from the inside out rather than the outside in, life changes and it gets better and better. That's what I found. Well, you talk transformation leadership. I mean, I uh, uh, went to one of my doctorate is uh, transformation leadership, uh, inside out, inside, you know. So I can't, um, before we get heavily off into this, if uh, if our viewers and our listeners wanted to know, Ken, what would be the best adjective that would describe Candy Foster and why? Well, the adjective would be courage. And the, the why is that I've learned, I got really good at fear. Any of you really good at fear? Like, you know, you have some fears, you're afraid of uh, maybe starting a business, you're afraid of being in the right relationship, you're afraid your health's going to fa fail, um, you're afraid that your wife might say something you don't like, you're, you know, we're, ma we're masters at fear, right? And, you know, right, right, uh, what switches fear into fearlessness is courage. And, you know, I know you, you're going to probably ask me, well, how do you define courage? So I'm just going to give it to you, Right. Courage comes from the Latin word cur, which means to speak one's heart. But it's more than that. And when I define courage, courage is a, a force. It's a power. It's an energy. It's a resonance within us. And when we can tap into that and stay in the courageous mindset, stay in that energy, that vibration, there is no fear. Fear and courage can't be in the same house together. So courage is the, is, has been my whole life. 
And, you know, it, it took me years to really realize that. And every time I got stuck, it's because I went back into the fear mindset instead of the courage mindset. Wow. I never heard anybody put it like that. Uh, but you're absolutely right. Uh, fear and courage cannot coexist at the same time. <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, so also can for our viewers out there, uh, transformation, which you, you brought up about uh, a second or so. We got about two minutes before the break. Okay. Um, how did you get started with the, your transformation business? Oh, that's such a wonderful uh, minute and a half story. <laughs> so uh, well, I, we can uh, pick I, it up after the break. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can do it really quick. So, uh, you know, I uh, at one point in my time in my life, I was, became a stockbroker, a security principal, an arbitrator for the National Association of Security Dealers. I happened to about uh, 10 years into my career uh, start up a, a, a division in Bank of America uh, and I had about 350 branches under me in Northern California. We were doing about $200 million in revenue after the second year, right? I got to that place and I was in therapy at the time. And, and you know, even though I was making a lot of money and helping a lot of people doing things, a lot of things weren't working for me in my life. So I'm in therapy. And um, I'm hearing this little voice and this little voice says, Ken, you've got to feel the pain to make the change. So I go to the therapist and I've been with him for a year and he's sitting in this chair. He's a guy with blue eyes and it's kind of still got blue hair, uh, gray hair. And I'm, I'm talking to uh, the doctor and I said, I hear this voice. And he says to me, Ken, you've got to follow that voice. You've got to follow that voice. As I walked out of his office, I didn't know whether he was, uh, he was not wanting me in his office anymore or something was changing. <laughs> anyway, what happened with me is I followed that voice. What was the voice? That was the voice of courage. That was in 1992, and everything started changing for me once I started following that voice. Why don't you hold that thought, Ken? I want to come back and talk about the voice of courage a little bit more. You know, so, hey, viewers and listeners, wherever you're watching us, whether you're watching us on these Greek television, when you're watching us on YouTube, radio, or et cetera, if you want to be part of the conversation, all you do is just go to the platform that you're watching us on ask mr ken foster any question that you might have i promise you we'll get you an answer is your life and we'll see you shortly after the break really get a chance to know who you are and once you know who you are you truly know who you are love who you are love who you are your masterpiece. Love who you are. Love who you were born to be. Love, love me for me. That's what I'm talking about. When you leave high school, you gotta know today or tomorrow, or hopefully today, what your plans are. Hopefully, yeah, you know, there is no bad decision unless there is no plan. Create, collaborate. Commit with confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. And everything that you do. I've seen a smile convey I love you. I'm proud of who you are. The one that keeps us close when we're apart. Walking from the darkness of all the It seems that there might be a way to leave behind the loneliness we've known and live again life of Noah Dingley here, producer of The James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. And the new audio version of James' book, Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, is a must-have. James shares his true-life story of struggle and success in America. 
It's both a cautionary tale and a roadmap to achieving the American dream. Get the new audio version of Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet by James Cooley on Amazon.com or wherever audiobooks are sold. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. And uh, hey, Ken, I want to say one thing. I, I want to thank our viewers and listeners out there. We just went over 31,000 31, subscribers on our YouTube channel. And that's just one platform. So thank you for all the support. Thank you guys for continuing to watch. And I, I tell you, whichever platform that you all are watching us on, this is an incredible guest I got here, Candy Foster. If you want to just reach out and ask any question that you might have, this young man right here will provide you with an answer. You know, so, hey, Ken, I want to pick it back up because you were talking about the voices of courage. And uh, that just, just stuck with me. And I wanted you to expand on that a, a little bit more if you can. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I appreciate you calling me a young man. That's That's very good. Well, listen, voices of courage. What is the voice of courage? We all have it within us. We all have courage, but courage is like riding a bike. You, you know, um, some people can really ride a bike well, and other people, they haven't developed that skill set, right? So, courage is something we all have, but you have to develop it. What is it? Where does it come from? How do I develop it? One of the ways that you can develop it is by asking courageous questions. For instance, you could ask yourself if I were courageous today, what are the three most important steps that I can take to X, Y, Z, build my life, become a, a better, uh, a better salesperson, to become a better business owner, to be able to become a better team player? What are the three most uh, important steps that I can take? That's one way we can do it. Another way we can do it is setting a goal. Set a goal that's bigger than what you've tried to do in the past. Right. So, for instance, this year I set a goal to ride from San Francisco to San Diego with the Challenge Athlete Foundation, raise 15,000 for them on my own and um, ride with about 26, 27 challenge athletes. These are people that have lost their limbs. Right. Children and also adults. And, uh, you know, I didn't know what what was going to happen. I didn't know the how of this. I knew the what I knew the goal. And what happens when you stretch yourself like that, right? Imagine that, 700 miles, about 100 miles a day uh, for seven days in a row. My mind tells me I'm going to get sleepier and sleepier or tired or tired and my muscles are going to wear out and stuff. That's what my mind says. But that's not what the infinite potential within me says. That's not what the voice of courage says. The voice of courage says every day. I take one step towards that goal, one step. And that's what I did. See, that voice in you can be developed too. set goals that are much higher than what you think is possible. Get out of your your uh, your zone. The other part of this, uh, James, is that for me, it's about service. Right. I know that when I set a goal, that's a noble goal. That's one that I win. My community wins. My family wins. You know, everybody wins here. Right. Um, when I do that then what happens is providence moves, the people, places, and things that are necessary for that particular goal to manifest starts to show up. And a lot of times it shows up very quickly. Wow. Yeah. Goals is, I believe, is the most important thing that people need to lock in. Uh, because if if you set meaningful goals, and you and you pursue those goals, and you stay motivated, and you had the courage to just stand, stand when things don't always go your way. That's when I believe that we get the most reward from achieving goals. And and, and Ken, you're a triathlon guy. <laughs> you run, uh, you swim, you, you bike, you do all of those things, uh, and so. Uh, how do you stay focused on these things? And I, I, the reason I ask this question because I want people to lock in on focus. 
uh, that sometimes there is pain. Sometimes it's going, it, we're going to get tired, but we have to continue to do what we have to do. Can you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. Let me just plus one other thing with the goal piece, right? So we're here, you know, goals go back to your, your why you're here from my point of view, right? Why are you here? Why are you on this planet? You are here and I am here to grow, to evolve, to remember who we are and to be of service to others. And if we do that, everything else starts to fall, fall into place. But we do that. Part of the ways we do that is with focus. I had a, let me tell you a quick story. I had a lady that I was coaching and um, I wasn't coaching her on focus. She actually was coaching me on focus after I heard this story. She was a musician, uh, an opera singer, and uh, uh, she would write music. She would sing music. And I asked her one day, I said, you know, how do you stay focused? And she said to me, she said, well, Ken, focus is not that big of a deal for me. She said, in fact, when I focus, I, I tune everything out and I just okay, completely take all distractions away. And whatever I'm working on, I just stay focused on that. She said, in fact, I can stay focused for eight, nine, 10 hours without eating, without anything, right? And, you know, have you ever been in somebody's presence where all of a sudden you go, you know what? There's no reason I can't do that either. You almost pick up their resonance. You pick up that energy from them. And from that day on, once I worked with her, and maybe you'll feel, feel this today, you know, coming through this with myself and James. You, you'll feel that, you know what, I, I remember, I, I can focus, I've got that ability. Let me see what happens if I go and maybe journal, uh, you know, to, I don't know what you're going to focus on, I'm just using that. Maybe journal for two hours. Would you, can, wouldn't that be amazing if you gave yourself the privilege to do that, the gift of doing that? So focus, of course, is one of the success principles. Without focus, we can't go much. Now, I'll tell you my secret to focus and um, and that is, I've been a meditator for thirty for uh, three decades. So focus. I'm focusing on the spiritual eye, right? For very long periods of time, it's focus, focus, focus. As within, so without. You know, like James said uh, earlier, right? And I said, you know, it's that place where we learn to just still ourselves. I, you know, Leonardo da Vinci, the greatest. One of the greatest creators of, you know, well, definitely the greatest uh, creator of the of the uh, Renaissance, right? I guess he was in that era. Um, you know, Leonardo said isolation is the price of greatness. Uh, the great sage Yogananda said that stillness is the price of greatness, right? So combine that for yourself. Isolation and stillness, whether you're in nature, whether you're meditating, whether you're being mindful, these principles apply to all areas of our life. You know, Einstein always said, he, he, he would, you know, back to the question thing, Albert Einstein said, um, he asked the question, what would it be like to ride a light beam of light, right? He asked that over 10 years and he got the special theory of relativity E equals MC squared, which changed everything, right, for all of us. How did he do that, though? He wasn't distracted on his computer, right? He didn't have it back then. He wasn't, you know, going from here to there, everywhere. He was in a place of contemplation and stillness. And the same thing applies to all of us. If you want to step into your power, your greatness, it's important to be still, to learn how to focus your mind, to learn how to uh, quiet yourself, and then come out and do what you need to do. Wow. You're absolutely right. Being still, being focused. But 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 Ken, most people, you mentioned the word courage. Uh, just like in, in your new book, uh, courage, the courage to change everything. You talk about the importance of being aware of the inner genius. <laughs> can you can you explain and elaborate on that? Yeah. Well, I'll say it this way. This is how I learned it. It's very simple, but it, it gives an illustration. Everything comes out of this thing we call God, the universe, you know, name, name God. It, God has thousands of names, whatever that is. Everything comes out of that. Individual souls come out of that. So the spirit is over the soul. The soul is over our mind. Conscious, subconscious, and superconscious. I'll get into superconscious in a second. Mind is over our actions, right? What you focus on, you you do, it expands. Actions or, or um, our, our mind is also over our emotions. 
what you focus on, you feel. Emotions are over uh, those actions, actions over results, and results over destiny, right? So let's go to the level of mind. Mind is the cause of your liberation. Mind is the cause of your bondage. It causes both, right? So if we have the courage to explore the boundaries of our mind, if we are, are willing to step into courage, and we're willing to let go of our fears and be able to let go of our resistance to learning something new, expanding in greater ways. Are you, are you willing to do that? I'm talking to you now. Okay. If you're willing to do that and, and you want to step into courage, then what's going to happen for you is, is everything's going to start to change on a consistent basis, right? So the book I wrote. The Courage to Change Everything, Daily Strategies and Essential Wisdom to Awaken Your Inner Genius. How do we tap into the inner genius? Well, I already gave you one way, stillness. I also gave you another way, asking questions. And there's, there's another way that we can tap into our genius. And that is, of course, by learning from others and applying those principles. So when I wrote that book, this book took me six years to write. It's about 400 pages. It's uh, 440 pages, hardback. And uh, I rewrote it several times because I wanted to make sure that I had the wisdom of the ages in that book so you could learn from the masters, whether it's Einstein to Tony Robbins to uh, Jesus uh, to some of the Indian uh, sages to some of the Muslim sage, I want it around the world. I want you to get the wisdom of the ages. And that's in those books. The other thing that's in that book, remember we talked about ha asking questions. Well, in that, in that book, my Courage to Change Everything book, I put in there the most profound questions that you can probably ask to be able to take you completely out of your limitations, completely out of you, anything that may stop you and help you to tap into higher realms of consciousness, higher realms of thinking that's already within you, but you're just not necessarily asking the right questions to get there. Stillness plus the right questions plus wisdom plus persistence will get you where you want to go. I'm loving this because well, one of the things when I'm on stage and I'm talking about, especially when we talk about confidence, courage, Courage, hope, believe, most important things. Um, in order to get the right answer or whatever you're looking for, you have to ask the right question. Because if, if you ask the wrong question, all answers are right. All of them are right. <laughs> and so, man, you just explained that extremely well. And I tell you, we're going to take a station break, but I can't wait to get back and talk to Ken some more. And if you want to be part of the conversation, all you have to do is go to the platform that you're watching us on or listening to us on uh, and just uh, ask uh, any question that you might have. I promise you, I promise you, we'll get you an answer. It's your life, and we'll see you shortly after the break.
James J.C. Cooley from the United States of America and I am here to just say first of all I'm so happy and honored to be on it to be in the Coffee Book 2023 20, Unified Brain Z and the other organizations thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to uh, be a part of this collection I am the founder and CEO of the J.C. Cooley Foundation, Options, Opportunities, Last, and Choice Board. Our primary mission is to help build the foundation of our youth and young adults and communities. And we encourage everyone to dream big, think big, and be big at everything you do. And the way that you do that is, first of all, you got to believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself. You have to know that you are here for a purpose. You also have to be able to step out your comfort zone and do things that you that you probably didn't think that you can do. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show It's Your Life. And I tell you, I, I I'm thoroughly enjoying uh this conversation with my good friend uh Candy Foster uh Enlightenment enlightenment uh that's what he's i told you he was gonna bring it i mean that's just i, did, just, I told you in the beginning of the show and uh i know that he is bringing it and he's this man is so accomplished and doing so many great things out there to help people not just in the united states but around the world and uh, i tell you i believe that since you've been listening to him, you might want to go out and get his books. And that's the first question I'm asking. Ken, how can these, how can our viewers and our listeners get your work and get in touch with you uh, to share uh, your vision, your understanding, and your focus on on what you think that we all can do to help better ourselves? Well, I, I love that. And uh, yeah, my, my work is focused on your evolution, you remembering who you are. And, you know, it's, it's interesting when we remember who we are, James, as you know, um, you know, if you know you, who you are, you, you can't see color, meaning racial color. You can't see it when you know who you are. When you know who you are, you no longer have to believe in yourself. You become yourself. When you know who you are, you step into your power, your passion, your purpose, and you allow it to just flow through you. When you know who you are, you realize that you just you serve a divine cause, a divine plan that is unfolding as you start to speak your truth. When you know who you are, you step in to joy, to happiness. You know, and and people go, well, who am I? I think that the uh, uh, one of the best definitions I heard was from a yogi. And uh, he said uh, the, the definition was that we're SAT, Sat, Chit, C-H-I-T, Ananda, Sat, Chit, Ananda. I said, what's that? He said, ever existing, ever conscious, ever new bliss. Now, let that sink in. Let it sink in. What if that was really the essence of you, ever new bliss? It's hard to have bliss and fear in the same house. It's hard to have bliss and anger in the same house. It's hard to have bliss and selfishness in the same house or jealousy or greed or any of those. When you understand at the essence of who you really are, who what the potential for you is, then everything changes. So you ask, why did I, you know, what, what, how to get my books and stuff? Well, this book here, which will help tune you in to your soul and ask you soulful questions, and you can get that on Amazon. This book here, my latest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Daily Strategies and Essential Wisdom to Awaken Your Inner Genius. I think everybody has to have this book. I can't imagine somebody not going through life with this book because every day you get astute wisdom, no matter what level you're at, no matter you're super successful. Listen, I, I work with people right now that have billion businesses that are doing $100 million a year, okay? They are, they're passionate about giving this book out to their employees. They know that when everybody tunes in to their creative genius, 
they can step in and do things they've never been able to do before. So where can you get the book? Courage to change dot us. Courage to change dot us. U.S. Do you have the courage to change? You know, and I put in there, you know, I was going to call it the courage to change, James. But then I thought I'm on to the courage to change everything. Why? Because when you start to change one thing, think about you ever buy a, a new a new uh, couch for your living room. All of a sudden, wow, maybe I need a new chair. Maybe I need a new TV. Maybe I need a new carpet. Right? Everything starts to change. Well, it's the same thing with us. When you change your consciousness, you up level yourself. And I want to say this, this is so important. When you change your consciousness, when you up level, you're changing it for seven generations below you. Seven gen Think about that. When you change, your children change. Their consciousness changes. Their children's consciousness changes. Their children's children. And so on it goes. You become part of the solution on this planet. If you want something better in this world to happen, you, you really, Gandhi said it. Be the change you want to see in the world. And we need to pass that message on and remember that message for ourselves. 2024 is just about ready to be part of our lives, right? Well, here's the deal. Who are you going to be at the end of 2024? That's what I want to know. And that's what I want you to ask yourself. You know, a lot of times we have, James, underneath the surface, we have these limitations. You know, you teach everybody about it. Limitations, right? What are the limitations? It's our past programming. It's our past socialization. It's our harms, our guilt, our shame, our wounds, things we could have, would have, did, should have done. All that's underneath the surface. Subconscious mind keeps track of all that, right? You ever been out and somebody said something to you and all of a sudden you react? You go, where'd that come from? Or you get angry? Where'd that come from? Well, you're carrying that emotion in you at some level. So uh, there's a, uh, a program I created, James. I give it away free. It's called the release process, a powerful ex uh, exercise to do between now and the end of the year. And you can get it right on my site for free, kendfoster.com, kend as in Donald, foster.com. You scroll down on the homepage. I want everybody to have that release process. I want everybody to get this book. Because if, if you do, guess what? My children get to live in a better world because you've done your work. You stepped up. Your children will experience that. That's how we change this world. That's how we change ourselves. And I hope you take me up on it. Wow. Because you know, uh, you, you, you just uh, uh, packed a lot of stuff in there. But most importantly, uh, what, what I take away from that one is you mentioned if you change uh, the mindset or you change the heart, you change whatever, it's seven generations down the line that's going to be affected in the good if that's what your focus is. Uh, but also, if you got a, a evil person or whatever that is and, that, and and they put their beliefs out there and, and force that on to, and it's going to be generations in their family that's going to, going to be opposite of good and bad. How, how would you uh, tell or uh, explain to our audience and our viewers that, that's watching this and going to be watching this for a long time? Um, how do they uh, focus and set their mindset on the right things, the things that are happening uh, in the world now and things that are going to happen later, but to have the right mindset where I, I like to think that I'm a good person. Uh, I focus. I love everybody. Uh, no race, nothing, no racism, no, none of that stuff. I don't see black and white. I just see love. Uh, how would you explain to our viewers that are losing hope uh, because of current situation circumstances that are going on and they like it, it's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse. Well, first of all, I want to acknowledge that is your area of expertise because I've seen your motivational speaks and, and talks and you lift the audience up and you bring them right up, right? You get out. It's like we can't have this hopelessness going on. But, you know, um, I'll, I'll give you my comment on it too. I, I think that we all, we're emotional beings. We go through ups and downs. You know, everybody doesn't have a great day every day, right? Um, but if you do the work, your days get better and better. I'll tell you that. 
Um, but if you, I'll tell you what I've done and I'll tell you what I do for my clients. You know, I've, co I've coached over 10,000 clients now. Uh, I've got uh, hundreds of thousands, uh, probably 20, 30,000 hours of coaching these days um, that I've done over the last 30 years. And, you know, everybody has some commonalities. We're all at the core of the essence. We all have the same commonalities there. What I want to say is that when an emotion hits, you have to you, you notice it in your body. Notice it, you know. Breathing is important, right? A lot of times when something hits, we stop breathing, right? You get upset. You're afraid of something. Um, let, me, let me tell you what the core of, of fear or anger is. What's, what's at the core? I always like to go to the cause, right? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you like to know the cause of all anger on this pro on this planet almost all fears it's the it's the feeling or the fear we could say it's the fear of not getting what you want or the fear of losing what you have that's at the core of all, all anger i can tell you that okay so and you don't don't trust me look at your own life go and uh, think about next time you're angry okay but when you understand that principle it will help you to let it go so hopelessness and we have a lot of that in the world i'll tell you what to do number one turn off the tv okay tune on <laughs> tune in to james's show tune in to positive programming on my show the voices of courage show or my new show called heal it learn how to heal your body mind soul and spirit learn how to tune in higher to higher levels of, of, of awareness and consciousness these aren't just i'm not just giving you words i'm giving you principles and what I'd like you to do is James's audience, when when you when I say, you know, learn how to meditate, hey, listen, go figure that out, right? There are some brilliant teachers how to can do that. If you don't want to meditate, then learn how to contemplate, learn how to ponder, learn how to focus your mind, learn some of the principles of mind so that you can start to tune into who you really are. One of the other pieces for uh, goal setting, I'm gonna just go back there for one second. I, I mentioned we're all evolving, growing, and, and learning. Goals help us do that. Set those goals that you can you can really evolve yourself with, right? So again, you can pick learning how to focus. And you say, you know what? I've been a procrastinator. I don't know how to focus on things. I put things off. I don't do things I should do. I'll give you two tips on that one, by the way. Do the I, I worst. Can't. Hold that though. Hold that yeah. though. Yeah. Save those two tips until I okay, talk about yeah, go Also, we got a uh, a question that's from Fire and Life that uh, asks you, but we're gonna get okay. back to that after the commercial. You know, I I knew that uh, one hour with Candy Foster was not enough. We 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 might have to do this again if Ken had time in the schedule, but we still got more time left in the show. I'll tell you what, your platform is you. If you want to be part of the show, all you do is go to it, ask any question you might have. I promise you, I promise you, we'll get you an answer. It's your life. We'll see you shortly after the break.
really get a chance to know who you are. And once you know who you are, you truly know who you are, love who you are. Love who you are. You're a masterpiece. Love who you are. Love who you were born to be. Love, love me some me. That's what I'm talking about. When you leave high school, you gotta know today or tomorrow, hopefully today, what your plans are. Hopefully, you know, there is no bad decision unless there is no plan. Create, collaborate, commit with confidence. Commit with what? Commit with what? And everything that you do. Welcome back to James Cool Show Show Life. And hey, Ken, I'm looking at these numbers on, on YouTube, and they uh, you got a lot of people locked in. Uh, but they ain't saying nothing. Uh, I mean, they locked in and watching the show. And and if I was them, I would be asking this great genius, Ken Foster, uh, a lot of questions if I had those type of thoughts. You know, so, but uh, hey, Ken, I want to get back. Man, I as I was saying prior to the break, that uh, I'm hoping that we can do this again because <laughs> this this is so extraordinary and it's so good uh, to have. I'd love, love, to do it. love to do it with you again, James. Absolutely. I do. I do see a question uh, that's uh, in there, and I'd love to answer it if you'd like me to. Absolutely. Uh, uh, yes, please. Yeah, so the question uh, is, um, there there are many voices that we hear every day. How do we distinguish the right one to follow? Uh, for instance, uh, does confidence, what does confidence sound like? Well, I'd like to say this, that just as courage, intuition in most of us is uh, where we start. It's like a gut feeling for some. You might, you might feel it. You might hear it. You might sense it. Uh, uh, but intuition, of course, is 100% accurate, but most people, it's, it's not developed. So we have to make an effort to develop our, our intuition. One of the quick ways you can start to develop it is to ask this question. Uh, uh, you know, for instance, um, you're, you're going to make a choice to go uh, to the movie theater or stay home with your family, right? And either one might be the right way to go. So you just ask yourself, does this feel light or does this feel heavy? heavy does it feel light to go to the movie or does it feel kind of heavy right same thing staying at home does that feel light or heavy so that's the question that you can ask um intuition of course is developed by some of the principles we talked about earlier stilling your mind learning how to meditate deeply going into the spiritual eye going into cosmic consciousness um you know those take years to practice but they're worth it they they will help you to develop that intuition um the other way we can learn intuition is um, uh, i'll give you a great story my wife, uh, let's see how we're doing on time. Yeah. My wife, Judy, uh, is, uh, was much more developed in the beginning with her intuition when we first met each other. And so she, we, we'd be driving down the street and she'd say, turn left. I said, no, I can't. if I turn left, I, I've gone that way many times. There's a lot of, usually a lot of traffic at this time. And I give her a lot of argument. And I'd say, no, we need to go right. And inevitably, there'd be traffic on the right, right? And we did this, I don't know, maybe 10 times. I went, okay, I've got to start listening. To something different than my voice because my voice my reason is getting us in trouble so i started paying attention to her intuition and oh, i couldn't believe it. almost every time we're going the right there's no traffic there's nothing to this day she'll tell you i listen to her intuition right um but i also listen to mine and men and women come together right you know this james you know women have more developed intuition most women than men and we have developed reason so when you come together with reason into intuition, you combine that, you become a very powerful force together if you can get to that point in the marriage, right? Um, but anyway, I hope to answer that question that, uh, you know, light or heavy, uh, just start to develop your intuition more and more and set your intention that you want to develop your intuition to 100%. Intuition is everything, especially because uh, we are in this, uh, I believe, this circle and certain certain vibes that we get especially from uh, our partners uh because they know us better than <laughs> others and 
uh, they are just helping us out. You know, Ken, I got a question uh, that uh, in today's world, there seems to be a lack of integrity, a lie, lack of integrity. How can we show up with more integrity as we work toward our goals, uh, whatever goals those are? And I, I, I believe in what we call honesty, integrity, and ethics, HIE theory is what I call yeah. it. Well, I, I think the first thing we do is um, uh, when you come into a coaching session with me, the first thing I do is establish values, right? And I ask uh, a couple of questions, uh, you know, and you can ask yourself this uh, to get to your, your values. You know, one is what's important to you uh, about success, okay? And what's in the second one is what's important to you about life, okay? Because I want to know what you value, right? And, and, you know, everybody values little things a little differently, but... Um, if you're not living those values, once you ask those questions and, um, you know, if you, you're having a challenge doing that yourself, uh, go on my website. And uh, for the first 10 listeners of James show today, I'll give you a complimentary 30 uh, minute session. I guarantee you, you'll not only know your values, you'll let go of some of the limitations that, uh, that are stopping you if you get one of those sessions with me. So it's KenDFoster.com, KenDFoster.com. Scroll down and you'll get a session with me, first 10. Um, all right, so listen, once we establish our values, right, then what we wanna do is we want to, uh, we want to set any, it, it really doesn't matter, set any kind of goal that you really want and and start to live those values. Here, here's the key, if you, you, we're talking about integrity and we're talking about um, if, if integrity is key to you, right? And people aren't being integrous ar around you. Well, you show the way you be the hero. You show what integrity is about and how you do that is by setting, uh, understanding your values and then living those values continuously. If you do that, you're going to be in integrity with yourself. Now, if you don't, if you start procrastinating or if you make, Make a commitment to yourself or others and you don't complete it. Guess what? It chips away your self-esteem. What is esteem love? Self-love a little bit, a little bit. You keep doing that for a long period of time. You know, a lot of overgivers. I, I used to have a lot of people that overgave would come to me and, uh, you know, they'd attract all these takers in their life, right? They attack the opposite so that they can learn the balance between the two of them. But the, the, uh, the givers, right? They would uh, inevitably they did. They were out of integrity because they, they would give, 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 but they wouldn't have any time to give back to themselves. And a lot of times they wouldn't be in integrity because they would not they wouldn't keep their commitments to themselves. Right. So it low self-esteem then. And, and it's it, it it's it can be a mess. So if you're in that place, <laughs> don't stay there. Go to my site. Let me help you. Wow. It can. We're down to less uh, men have on the show. Uh, Please let our, I know you just said it again. How can people get your book, uh, books? How can they get in touch with you? How can they do this session? I know you just mentioned it, but I want to, I always like to mention it again uh, so that it be fresh in uh, our listeners' mind. Okay. So uh, do you want to buy my book, Courage to Change? Go to courage to changeus You want to get a session with me. You want to get the release process, kendfoster.com. Um, you want to buy my other books, go to Amazon and get them up there. And James, uh, I just want to thank you so much for being here. What you do is impressive and powerful, and it's positivity. Po positivity programming is where to be. You asked at one point, you know, how do I how do I step my life up? Listen to James' show on, on and on and on. Listen to my show. You will start to uplevel your life in so many ways, start to vibrate energy and power and passion in your world. Hey, real quickly, Ken, tell them uh, what time your show comes on, how they can uh, reach you. So you got 30 seconds or less. Okay. I want them you to log in. Sure. My, my show is all over. So you can Google uh, uh, Voices of Courage. Uh, you can tell Alexa, Cortana, or Siri, play Voices of Courage podcast. It'll come up for you. Uh, you we're on YouTube. Uh, we're on uh, every social media platform that's out there. Or you can go to voicesofcourage.us. Voices of Courage on us to get all of our replays. Ken, I like to thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. I, uh, I'm inviting you back again. Let me know if, when your schedule uh, permits you. I like to thank Dr. Michelle Cooley for putting together another extraordinary show. Most importantly, I like to thank my viewers and our listeners for tuning into the James Cooley Show Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. 
as always, I want everyone to always leave dreaming big, dream big, think big, be big. You can check us out on the radio, uh, KCBQ, FM 96.1 AM 1170 answer out of San Diego, uh, Sunday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Otherwise, we'll see you next week, same time, same place. It's your life. Talk to you then.